So somebody gave me this idea. I just did the coolest thing today. So as you would imagine, military bases don't allow you to fly over them. Wait. Oui right? Uh, they have what's called restricted areas or restricted flight zones that you can't fly within. But a couple of years ago, I was visiting Vandenberg Space Force Base. If you don't know what Vandenberg Space Force Base, formerly known as Vandenberg Air Force Base, <gasps> it's one of the couple of places, I want to say two or three places in the country in the United States where we launch rockets. So at any rate, I found myself at Vandenberg Space Force Base, and I ended up finding myself in the control tower uh, getting a tour. And as I was talking to some of the airmen there um, who do the ATC, they were saying how sometimes they allow civilians to come into the restricted, do a low approach over the runway, and depart. And I was like, <sighs> like, that blew my mind. Like, I never thought that they'd just be like, oh, yeah, cool, just come fly over the runway. I think it's because they really don't have a whole lot of air traffic there. There's really not a whole lot going on there. Most of their stuff is rockets. So I figured that I would do that someday. Well, today was the date. I was out wanting to go flying around because I need some extra cross-country time, and I really want the experience under some control towers. I trained in Class Echo airspace, and Class Echo airspace is uncontrolled, meaning you just do what you want all the time. Class E airspace equals... Do what you want, all the time, except AJ. He is a danger to society. And when I would do my cross countries, I would usually go over to Class Echo airspaces because I like doing what I want all the time. Control, controllers, they, they scare me. Controllers scare me a little bit. I'm not going to lie. They just ramble at you and then expect you to read it back. And I'm like, Ugh. little tip. An old Navy pilot told me, oh, just lie and say you're a student pilot. Then they'll help you. I don't know how integral that is, but, um, it worked. I'm just joking. I didn't do that. So I went to the airport and I planned my flight. So I have my phone with the GPS on it, but I don't have any other navigational aids in the champ. Um, all I've got is a compass and I don't even have a VR. So we're going to do the old fast. My pencil just went out of the microwave. This is what we got going on. We're going from Paso Robles, California, all the way down to San Luis Obispo. We're gonna go over to Vandenberg uh, Space Force Base, see if they'll let us fly over the runway. Then we're gonna go down to uh, Santa Barbara. And then we're gonna probably get some gas, go back up to Santa Maria, and then uh, back up to Paso. Once I got out of Paso Robles, Paso Robles, Traffic Bronco, Bug Smasher, departing runway 19 with a left 45 departure to the south, Paso Robles. I did a touch and go in San Luis, cause like I said, I want control tower experience and that's a class Delta airport. Also the landing, eh. I'm just joking, I'm a pilot, I'm perfect all the time. What am I saying? So when I got outside of the Vandenberg Restricted, I called him up about, well, not on the phone, on the radio, about 30 miles out, but I was only maybe 10 miles from the restricted zone. They advised me to contact when I got closer. I got within about a mile of the restricted, and I called him up and they said, yes, and I was stoked. Also, Vandenberg is a gorgeous base. It's on the west coast of California, um, on the central coast, it's just, gorgeous beach you know like the the base extends all the way out to the beach and into the ocean so from the time that i called and said yes it probably took me about 20 minutes to get there because this thing is slow as hell but it got there and let me tell you it was the coolest thing ever that runway by the way is like 15,000 feet long you can't see the con the control tower can't see one end of it because of how it uh the 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 ground go downy the elevation difference from one side of the field to the other and where it is, uh, the control tower can't see the entire runway. You could barely miss the end. So anyway, I flew over it at about, I don't know, 50 feet. It was the coolest thing ever. Then they let me depart. After that, I went down to Santa Barbara and took a break. Okay, I just touched down in Santa Barbara. This place is gorgeous. And uh, there's this really cute girl in the um, in the in the thing, in the FBO. Same. Also, when I was on the way into Santa Barbara, this controller kept calling me a World War II aircraft when they were spotting me out to other people. It made me feel so cool. Now, the Bug Smasher, is it a World War II airplane? Uh, it's painted with the 10th Mountain Division livery and it has a red cross on it. From what I know, I bought into this airplane a few years ago, but from what I've been told, this airplane was built in 1946, I believe. I don't know. It, it's kind of, it's different on like the registration as it is other places. Um, I don't really know the specifics, but supposedly uh, it is a warbird. So Vandenberg Space Force Base is the only base that I know of that does this. And like I said, I was having a conversation with the air traffic controllers at Vandenberg themselves, and they were telling me how they do this when it's not busy, 
or that sort of thing. I doubt other bases do it, but if you're flying in the vicinity of Vandenberg and it's something you're interested in, you know, call them up, see what they say. I have a feeling it'll be a little while before I fly under restricted again, hopefully. Hopefully I'm right and I don't have sheriffs at my door when I get home.